so my introduction uh, is uh, intercropping in Europe. Why and how? This is the title proposed by uh, by Vopke. I will do my best to try to uh, um, answer these uh, two uh, questions. So as I said, I am Eric Just. Now I am working at CIRAD in Montpellier in south of France, and I'm uh, deputy head of uh, Prasis department working on cropping and farming systems, food engineering and bioenergy systems. And I am the coordinator, the scientific coordinator of Remix European project. So uh, first of all, I would like to introduce some aspects in order to be sure we are speaking about the same thing. Uh, I want to uh, highlight the current challenges for uh, European agriculture, but uh, as I saw that uh, many students come from Americas or also Asia, I believe that uh, what I have prepared is also true for uh, your conditions. First of all, climate change. Climate change, a reality with impacts ever demonstrated. I uh, don't want to go into details, but uh, in most of the situation, we have some uh, um, negative impact, even if in some countries, such as in the northern countries of Europe, we, you could have opportunities. You know very well all these challenges. I don't want to go into details, but one thing very important is that adaptation is needed for agriculture, and also uh, we need to uh, find compromise between adaptation and mitigation of climate change. The, I want to say that agriculture needs to contribute to the reduction of CO2 emissions in the same time than continuing producing. So this is a very important challenge. The second key challenge is uh, the, the fact that agriculture needs to um, strongly reduce the use of pesticides, in particular in uh, conventional systems and in, in Europe, where we have very intensive production systems. Why? Because we need to avoid continuing the dramatically de uh, biodiversity decline. And species diversity could be an assurance for uh, climate change, for example, and also could be interesting for limiting the risk uh, such as climate, pests and disease, and also market price. And we believe that uh, species diversity is interesting for flexibility in the management that could help uh, to uh, uh, modify and redesign the European agriculture. And then we believe that redesigning this agriculture on a high biodiversity or ecological intensification is the way to follow uh, in the future in order to face these challenges. So as an agroecology and a species mixture in particular. Some definitions and the scale of analysis. Very briefly, because uh, as you are from the, the agricultural fields and, and, uh, and uh, domains, you know that very well, but it's better always to remember that what is a cash crop or a crop is a marketable crop to provide food, feed, fiber, and or bioenergy. Fallow period, it's the period between two main cash crops that could be very short or very long. Cover crop, it's uh, some crops that are uh, sown during the fallow period to provide multi-services. And then this, is, this crop is not harvested never for food, feed, fiber, or bioenergy, but to improve uh, fertility or of soil in general and to give some services uh, for the next crop, but also at the benefit beneficial of uh, uh, the, the cropping system and in the landscape. A rotation is a regular catch crop succession in time. So this is for us something very important in agroecology for the diversification in time. And intercrop, lastly, is a crop or species mixture grown in the same space during a pot or the crop cycle. 
And this is diversification in space. And this is the main aspect we will uh, uh, talk about in uh, these uh, training courses. Another point I want to uh, um, recall you is that we have to um, evaluate the performances of uh, cropping and uh, production systems. And we have also in the same time to evaluate according to the fact that we have such challenges of uh, uh, climate change or reducing uh, strongly the use of pesticides, we have to evaluate the resilience and the robustness of a cropping system. Then a cropping system is defined uh, and consists in uh, an ordinarily cultivated species or crop and coordinated agricultural practices on the crop. A cropping system is efficient if a regular production can be achieved at a targeted level according to the pedoclimatic conditions with few inputs and few negative externalities to provide a farmer income for, for with environmental subsidies. And the resilience of a cropping system could be defined, def, uh, defined in many ways. I have just in, uh, shown here one definition I like very much is that uh, resilience of a crop and an, an agro, agro system, it's its ability to maintain the level of ecosystem services, input products and uh, public goods in the in the face of a changing environment. And we can also say that resilience of a cropping system, it's its ab uh, ability to maintain a high level of ecosystem services compromised uh, expected during crossing hazards. I mean, I mean, we have such uh, climate, pest, disease, etc. impact uh, in agriculture all the time. And our hypothesis here is that in tea cropping is the most resilient, is most resilient than soil cropping to climate change and better adapted to low input agriculture and then to decrease the use of pesticides. And this is why we have focused uh, a part of our ac research activities on Inchi cropping. What is inchi cropping in practice? So there are many, many ways to, uh, uh, to uh, um, I'm say illustrate inchi cropping. From inchi cropping also to agroforestry systems. In a broad sense, agroforestry is also inchi cropping. Some definition and main characteristics, as defined a uh, long time ago by Wille. Uh, this is a simultaneous growth of two or more species in the same field for a significant period, not necessarily sown and harvested together. So inchi cropping or species mixture or crop mixture for us is as the same sense. Inchi cropping is an application of ecosystems based on the ecological principle such as the biodiversity, the species interaction, and the integrated protection. It's also uh, something that was ever developed by a colleague, Van der Mer, uh, in, the, in, the, in, uh, in the last century. And we have also a, a wide use of inti cropping in a traditional practice, but it's rarely cultivated, excepting for animal feeding in European conditions. And it corresponds to a wide uh, diversity of systems, such as annual catch crops, a mixer, or multi species pasture, or crop and trees together, such as agroforestry, and even trees and pasture and animals, or trees and trees. So there is a wide range of uh, uh, species mixture uh, in, the, uh, in the definition of inter cropping and agroforestry systems. Some examples of inch crops. I will focus only my talk on arable cropping systems that are the most developed in European conditions. You can see here some picture uh, showing sunflower siding in uh, inch cropping in strip inch cropping. Uh, in the middle, you can see uh, treaty kale faba bean in row inch cropping. And at the right, you can see durum wheat winter pea in mixture on the row. So there are many ways to uh, cultivate inchi crops. 
And one of the uh, key points, uh, except the the species uh, used in the in the in the intercrop, are is the uh, various type of special patterns on the row mixing. Alternate row are strip intercropping, and the strips could be uh, uh, quite small or very large. And according to uh, the uh, space between the two species, the plant-plant uh, interaction will be very different. And also you will have, according to the uh, spatial uh, structure, you will have some interaction that are not uh, homogeneous in the space. I mean that in strip intercropping, uh, for example here in the sunflower and soybean, you will have interaction that are different uh, according to the different rows, for example, here of soybean, since the row that are very uh, close to sunflower will be more impacted than the row in the middle of the strip. So this is a very key point to understand in order to analyze the plant plant interactions. Which are the interests of inch cropping for arable cropping systems? Any interests are reported in the, in the bibliography, and I must say, uh, in particular, for low input systems. You can see a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, references for improving cereal grain uh, quality, increased global yield, reduced weeds, potentially reduced pest and disease reduce the nitrate leaching risk, increase yield stability, increase or stabilize over time the farmer growth income. However, I must say that a lot of references for several grain leguminous crops are, um, are um, I must say, available, but uh, for other species mixer, there are not so much uh, references available and few limits highlighted by the scientific communities. And we saw that, uh, and in particular in Remix project, but we, we have also experience larger than that, that intercropies is not the solution to all the problem we have in agriculture. So we need to take care about that to be um, optimistic, but realistic in the same time by using the intercrop for solving uh, the, the problem we have in agriculture. I want to, to show you an example of uh, the interest of intercropping uh, for increasing the efficiency uh, for the yield. And uh, we, we, we did some, uh, some experiment uh, with Florent Bedoussin a few years ago. And uh, I will show you an example of Jerome wheat and uh, winter pea intercrop. We use here the famous uh, indicator called land equivalent ratio, which is an indicator of, of uh, intercrop performances. And this is the relative land area under soil crop required to produce the yield achieved in intercrop. So land equivalent ratio is the sum of uh, the partial land equivalent ratio of each species. And then you can uh, evaluate the contribution to this land equivalent ratio uh, between each uh, species of the intercrop. One example here is uh, the land equivalent ratio we uh, have measured uh, for three levels of N fertilization uh, for the durum wheat pea intercrop. So in yellow, you have the durum wheat, and in green, uh, you have the production of P. You, you have here the land equivalent ratio equal to one. That means that there is no interest uh, to grow uh, these two species together in intercrop in comparison to soil crop. Uh, you, you need the same, le uh, the same um, uh, space, the same unit of, uh, uh, of land to grow the same quantity of yield. So you can see that for uh, the two first uh, N uh, fertilization, fertilizer level, each crop is more efficient uh, in uh, the land using, uh, since you have more or less 20% more efficiency. But when you have, you are, we have increased the N fertilization, 
we have strongly decreased the yield of P, uh, and then in that case, there is no interest to grow into crop. So uh, this is something I want to highlight very much, is that into crop is not a way to continue intensifying with using a large amount of inputs. This is the way to decrease the inputs and to stay or increase the efficiency of the system. Another um, thing I want to mention, but I don't have the time to develop, is that uh, leaf um, land equivalent ratio is uh, widely used, but also abuse why it doesn't compare species yields. Um, we need to use other indices uh, in order not to say uh, wrong things when we, we want to interpret the functioning of an integral. I don't have the time to develop that, but uh, you can look at the, the paper we wrote a few years ago with Laurent Bedoussac. Anti-crop with legumes is surely uh, one of the main anti-crop that we have uh, the, uh, the, 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 the most important results. And uh, we show that it improves the production by species uh, complementarity, in particular for nitrogen sources. You know that uh, uh, legumes are uh, uh, able to fix nitrogen from the air and then we could uh, have a complementarity from the resources of uh, soil mineral nitrogen and uh, uh, N2 fixation. We shown, as uh, ever shown by a lot of uh, papers, and here in the framework of the organic farming systems, uh, that intercrop uh, allow to increase the total yield, I mean uh, the yield of cereal plus legume, um, and then uh, most of the situation here allow to increase uh, this uh, yield uh, with uh, uh, an efficiency that is uh, more than 30%. However, the proportion of cereals is always uh, larger than 50%. So this show that for this particular uh, type of intercrop, cereal was more uh, competitive. And the, why we have this result? Because we have a higher uh, legume and two fixation rate in intercrop. Uh, and then uh, because of the competition for mineral nitrogen in the soil, the legume is forced, I must say, to fix more. And then we could have a niche complementarity for end sources. And the most of the end uh, mineral nitrogen is available for the cereal and then inching crop efficiency is higher in low input system because if you are uh, using a lot of end fertilizer, this complementarity will not be rich. Another point I want to show is an example of uh, inching cropping for uh, lentic production in organic farming. Is this a uh, solution for um, uh, improving uh, and uh, um, I'm say over uh, overcoming the three major yield reduction factor that uh, lead to uh, farmers not to grow lentil at the moment in organic farming instead of the strong demand uh, because people want to 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 have food more based on vegetables and uh, and legumes. Um, then we have problem with weeds, with brushes, with lodging. And then the, the key question was, uh, can inch crop uh, lower this uh, reducing factor compared to soil crop? And then is a way to uh, re-cultivate some um, lentil, grain legume in, in our European cropping systems. So we saw that uh, uh, the total crop uh, yield was higher in, here in inch crop here in, in right in comparison to the lanty soil crop. So this is the one one uh, line here and you can see that all the points are over this line in, uh, uh, showing that the yield is always higher in uh, inch crop than in uh, lanty soil crop. When we are comparing uh, the, 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 the yield of lanty alone for this species, you can see that even if the global yield is higher, 
the lentil uh, part is lower in comparison uh, in inch crop in comparison to the soy crop. So this means that there is a strong competition of wheat over the lentil. And uh, of course, uh, this uh, decreases uh, the yield of lentil, which is uh, the main objective for the farmer to grow uh, this inch crop. So we have analyzed if uh, the inch crop gross margin is impacted by this reduction of lentil, and the answer is clearly yes when we are comparing the actual gross margin. I mean, uh, measured by a hand measurement that we have, uh, we are we are uh, doing all the time in agronomy, and this shows that even if the global yield is higher the gross margin is lower. Why? Because the lentil have a price largely uh, higher than those of the wheat, more than four times larger, because it's sold for food, and then it has uh, the possibility to give a higher price value. So the, the problem is that in that case, if we are uh, stopping the analysis here, we will conclude that inch crop is interesting for increasing the yield, but not for the farmer income. Even if we have complementarities larger than uh, interspecific competition. But the key question was, remember that there was one problem with lodging, is uh, inch crop efficient to uh, uh, improve the mechanical harvest? So this was a, a question that we have uh, also uh, done some experiment with that. And we saw that the lentil grain yield really harvested was finally, as you can see here in comparison, same or a little bit higher, even if uh, the, uh, the, the yield, uh, I must say, in the field, and when, when you are uh, doing the analysis by uh, hand measurement, it's lower because we had an efficiency of harvest or mechanical harvest higher. And then in that case, there is very important to consider all the, the aspect of inch cropping, including also mechanical aspects and grain sorting. So that is also a key point for agronomists not to stop working at the field level. And how to explain this harvest efficiency? Simply by the fact that there is a stake effect thanks to the wheat. Even if the wheat in, in this condition was only at less than 20% uh, of the normal uh, density of wheat. And then this wheat, this wheat allow to have uh, the lentil uh, inch crop uh, both high, lowest, and more harvestable uh, lentil uh, in, in that condition. You can see that for the soy crop, there is a complete lodging of the crop at harvest, but with the inter crop, the, the lentil stay right. And then at the end, when we are calculating the gross ma margin on the marketable uh, uh, part of the, um, the, the inter crop, we have two important things that increase finally uh, the, mar the farmer income. Uh, first, because we are increasing uh, the harvestable, um, I must say, yield. And secondly, because we have also separated uh, the, the grains and then uh, the, the, the lentil could could have a very good values for food consumption. And then here we have demonstrated that inch crop of lentil with P, with uh, sorry, with wheat provides first an insurance for a farmer and a bonus, an insurance for being sure that he could harvest the lentil and a bonus because this increased the, uh, the price value of the inch crop the other, another point that I did not mention yet is that the wheat was uh, had also, sorry, a very high level of protein content that is very uh, 
valuable in organic farming to make bread. And then the price of wheat was also higher. So that is a nice story uh, to remember when we are uh, analyzing inchi cropping in agronomy to go further the economic or the microeconomic aspects. Some conclusion aspects towards agroecological systems. Yes, we can. The challenge is to redesign profitable arable cropping system with more species for providing multi ecosystem services as a way of a high species diversification. But more research is uh, surely needed. A number of factors are still uh, need to be optimized, in particular for inch cropping uh, and uh, to in the in the field of uh, suppressing pests and disease. I saw that in the program you will have a lot of uh, uh, courses on that, and it's a very important topic. But at uh, the moment, we know that uh, we don't know so much uh, information on that to be sure that it's a relevant solution in all the inchi crops. The paradigm of agroecology must be considered also at the territorial scale and at the whole uh, agro food chain to be fully effective. We need to unlock the system. I want to uh, say that in the in the case of uh, into crop when you are harvesting a uh, crop mixture, um, there are people who, which are collecting uh, this uh, mixture are not very happy and uh, uh, they need to store the grain and to clean the grains. So we need to rethink all the system to have uh, to give some added value, in particular to the farmers. Eric, the optimal rotation the position of energy crop also or the analysis of the potential resi resilience to climate change need to be analyzed for uh, proposing relevant solution. I mean, uh, practical solution and probably modeling is a relevant tool for exploring solution uh, and for local uh, pedoclimatic conditions. And then uh, to think about uh, redesigning such cropping systems. So modeling in crop to go further. Of course, we, we talk about uh, using here agronomic model. I mean, a model taking into account climate, um, cropping, uh, cropping techniques, crops and soil. And we need to simulate the different processes. And we need to uh, have some variable analysis of output in a large uh, range of uh, uh, crop functioning and soil crop functioning. Um, I want to say that we we have uh, an interest to develop such modeling. Uh, you will have some cor uh, courses with uh, Joachim on 3D models, but here I also want to mention that it's important uh, to be able to represent the full system. I mean, soil crop, uh, of course, interaction and in the in the in the in the crop cycle and also in the framework of the cropping system i must say at the rotation level so we need to represent the system and, and how to better understand and analyze the inch crop system functioning in dynamics for uh, in particular plant plant interaction capture of abiotic resources and understand uh, yield formation and performances this is really important for research and students and we need also uh, modeling uh, to allow simulating agronomic scenarios, in particular uh, in, uh, in uh, different soil, climate, agronomic techniques and, uh, and, and for climate change to optimize the anti cropping system. When you are considering the varieties of species, you can crop together and mix. It's, a, it's an infinity of solutions. And then modeling could be a way to uh, sort the different uh, a priori uh, or ex ante uh, efficient solution that you have to uh, after evaluate in field conditions. And it's more for researcher and also agronomist advisors. Inter cropping uh, simulated uh, by the sticks uh, model, you will have some more details, I believe, with uh, the talk of Sebastian Munz. We had the, uh, with the sticks model a first version in the, in the early uh, 2004. Uh, but we had just uh, in the framework of uh, Remix project uh, in, uh, develop a new version uh, for simulating two genotypes. Uh, I mean genotypes, it could be two species or 
two uh, varieties that are very different uh, characteristics in row and in the short uh, distance, uh, strip Halle, but very uh, short distance, not uh, um, um, strip intercropping with very large interrow. Uh, we can uh, simulate sowing and harvest at different, uh, that could be different uh, date for each crop. And we can simulate competition for light water in end uptake, the niche complementarity for light water and end acquisition, but there are strong limitations. There, no, there is no true facilitation simulated. For example, if you have phosphorus uh, more uh, available thanks to the uh, to acid ex, uh, ex, uh, exudation of roots in, uh, uh, by the legume, that uh, gives more phosphorus available for the for the serum is not simulated. Name biotic interaction with soil, micro or micro uh, bio uh, biology. So uh, we are simulated uh, with a simple 1D model, uh, such as a virtual compartmentalization. I don't want to go into details. Uh, but uh, it's not a 3D models, but it's allow us to simulate a dominant and understory crop uh, with an elementary picture that allow to share the not so badly the light uh, capture. I don't have the time to go uh, into more details. I just want to say something that uh, it is also important to analyze into cropping in tropical system uh, because it's a traditional practices uh, and uh, it could be very important also to develop a remix tropical uh, project in the future. And I want to thanks for your attention uh, and I hope you will have a nice uh, discussion now.